Today I'm going to show you how I make a hand-built spoon rest. Normally I throw my spoon rest. Here's an example of one. It's got, you know, I threw a little bowl, flattish bowl on the wheel, and then I made the um, place for the spoon to rest, and then when I took it off I trimmed it and added feet. So I thought um, I really wanted to try doing this hand-built because I got this way cool stamp and I wanted to use it. And I couldn't really figure out how I do that on a throne piece. It would be kind of hard to do. I guess it's possible, but difficult. So I've got this bendy ruler and I took the, the, I just wanted to get sort of an idea of what size to make. I took the ruler and I saw that it was about five inches around in the inside. And I took my shrink ruler and my clay shrinks about 14%. So I made a circle that was about five inches across. And then I'm gonna take that, made this template that I'm gonna to use to make the spoon rest. So I put the template down onto this slab that I've prepared, um, and I'm going to use a, just a pointy tool, you can use a pin tool, whatever you have, to make, to go, kind of go part way down, and then cut with a knife. Um, all the way around. Now, this is hand built. It's not exact. My circle's not exact. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. But I want to get it close to what size I'm. I cut. Whoops. <laughs> okay. All right. Now I've got my circle. And I want to smooth out the edges. So I've got my banding wheel here. And I'm just going to put it on the banding wheel because it'll make it easier to do. And I'm just going to hold my finger on the edge, kind of at a bit of a tilt so that it's pressing down, just to give like a nice soft ridge. Um, and then I'm gonna do it on the back side too. And then maybe one more time on the front, just because, whoops, got little bits of clay here getting in my way. Okay, then I'm going to remove the banding wheel for a moment and take my stamp. And I have found with this stamp it's easier to be standing when you do it. And you need to wiggle it a little. So I'm going to press down and then kind of to get a good impression, wiggle it. And hopefully that's good. That's pretty good. Oh, it has a little bit of a shadow, but that's okay. So now I've got my circle. Now you're like, well, wow, are you going to make it into this shape? Well, I have here a plaster bat that I made, a plaster mold. I had some leftover plaster when I was uh, doing some, making some plaster molds, and I just had these paper cups, uh, paper plates. Let's try that again. Paper bowls. And I just poured the extra plaster into the paper bowl and ended up with this little mold. And it turned out to be perfect for this particular thing. So I'm going to get the banding wheel again. So you put, I put the, and you don't have to do this with a banding wheel if you don't have one. It just makes it a little bit easier. So I put the um, circle onto the mold. Let's hold it. Try to get it as you know centered on there as possible. And then I just slowly turn around and press down. I'm not trying to get it to fit the exact shape of the mold. I just I'm using the mold as a um, like a drape mold, just a form uh, to to get the form somewhat, you know, to get the curve that we're looking for in the in the little bowl. And it does make a flat bottom. So that's kind of nice. All right. So then I would let this um, sit for a while so it dried out a little bit. And I happen to have one here that's already been sitting for a bit and has dried out and is ready to go. So the next step is to put this shape into it, the, the dip. I don't know what you call it. So because this particular pattern I used as a tree, you know, straight, I'm going to use that as the center of the dip. And you can really do any pattern, you know, that you want. You don't even have to do a pattern if you don't want to. I just thought this would be fun to have that in there. So I'm going to take my hands on either side of the base of the tree. Hopefully you can see this. All right, okay. And I'm going to just um, put my fingers on either side. Let's see if we do it like this. 
it may be a little bit easier to see. And then I'm going to just uh, cur create a curve with my finger just going down. Just like you would, you know, any pitcher kind of thing. But because we're hand building, we can manipulate it some too and just get the exact shape that we want. Okay. And then the last step is to put on feet. And you could, if you wanted to, you could leave it just like this and never put any feet on it. I mean, you don't have to put any feet on it at all. But I, I like the feet, so I put like these shallow feet on mine. So, probably a good idea to stand up and look at this and make sure that you've got it even, or even enough. So here you go. That's what, that's what we've got. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so now for the feet. So I've got a coil that I've rolled out. And I'm just gonna cut some, get three feet. Three feet seem to balance it well. I think I heard somewhere that that's always you use three feet because it's harder with four to get it to stay even. So I'm just going to cut three feet that are the same height. Oops. Or close enough. They're soft, so it's going to, it's, so yeah, these are pretty good. And um, the first foot I'm going to put where the base of the tree is. And then we'll put the other two um, on either side of the top of the tree. But I'm going to use the mold to do this because um, I want to also put my the imprint of my stamp. So it's easier to do that on here when you have um, something underneath it. So I'm just going to put my name and I'm trying out some new clays so I'm trying to figure out which is I have two dark clays so I just want to make sure I know which is which so I'm putting an extra stamp. So now this also gives a way to see here's where the um, the uh, I don't even know what to call that the lip that comes up part so I'm going to use that here and then I'm going to create one foot here and one foot here okay and then uh, we'll just score the little stumpy feet and slip everything And then when I put the foot on, I like to wiggle them a little bit to, get, to make sure they have a nice secure um, attachment. And these feet, they do look a little tall right now, but there's a reason for that. And again, you can do whatever you want for a foot. This is just what I happen to like. So make sure they're, they're in the right spot. I'm gonna turn it over to see. Yeah, okay, so it looks like it's lined up correctly. All right, so this one's a little bit soft to do what I'm about to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to turn this over for a moment. Move that, and then using, you don't need the banding wheel for this, but now I'm going to squish them all down. Oops, <laughs> that's what happens when it's a little soft. But that's okay, I can fix that. And I'm just going to find each foot and squish them down a little and then hopefully that will help them be all the same height and now it's stuck to the wheel now okay so there you go so that's a pretty simple um, fun project uh, to do hand built someday I'll show you how I do them on the wheel thanks for watching and I'll see you next time